Hello, I'm Anthony Clark, and this is just a brief, I'm, I'm, I'm about to provide a brief introduction to the project uh, that is the digitization of the Samist collection of images related to the Samist missionary enterprise in China, beginning really in the 1930s through the 1940s and up into, well, the, the very early 1950s. So I prepared a few slides just to provide some images for this introduction. So let me get that set up. And I will play. Um, so the first thing I, I want to say by way of introducing this project, which is the which is the digitization of the Samist collection of photographs related to the Roman Catholic enterprise, the Roman Catholic mission to China, is just that the whole project really begins with with uh, with Father Vincent Leb, uh, born uh, Frederick Leb, had his name changed to Vincent when he was ordained a priest. But uh, eventually, from Father Leb's initial years in China and his particular view, which is a view that was about empowering the native Chinese to create their own hierarchy in China, to essentially uh, manage their own church. This was Father Leb's, uh, um, one of his great ideas that was manifest into some very large changes to the Roman Catholic Church in China. But eventually his his le legacy and his work would, would, would manifest into what we now think of as the Samists, and the acronym is SAM, which represents Société des Auxiliaires des Missions, the auxiliaries, the Society of Auxiliaries to the Mission in, in China. But, but Father Vincent Leb went to China in 1901. He began, uh, he began his missionary work as a Vincentian, as a Lazarist, and would later uh, found his own order of brothers and sisters uh, in China. But he would make trips back and forth between Europe. And some, some of them were forced by the, the, the hierarchy to sort of get him out of China because uh, he represented a view that wasn't commonly shared by all of the bishops in China. But he would travel back and forth between Europe and China. And in 1922, Father Vincent Leb was in Belgium and he had a discussion uh, when he, with, with, with Father André Bolland, who was someone he had met there in Belgium. And they discussed... Uh, a new idea, and that was to form a group of European priests who would go to China, they would train, and they would go to China, and they would serve under Chinese bishops. See, this was a, a, an inversion of the, 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 the views that had been held previously, which was to send European priests to China to essentially run the church, and Europeans were most often uh, uh, selected and consecrated as bishops. Father Vincent Leb and Father uh, uh, Andre Boland had an idea that that the Europeans should go in service of Chinese bishops. So that was their idea. And that idea really uh, was inaugurated in 1922. And by 1930, a priest by the name of Father Raymond de Jaeger went to China with some others. And this was the initial band, if you want to use that word, of Samists, of these priests who, who, would, who would practice this particular charism to serve Chinese bishops. So the photos in the collection that we digitized in Brussels represent the photographs taken by and collected by Samists in China, largely from the 1930s to the 1940s, mostly 30s and 40s, but certainly even in the early 1950s as uh, the post 1949 era, uh, began a, a, a period of Chinese Catholicism and Christianity in general of really the exile of foreign uh, missionaries. So the images uh, in the collection are images of Father Leb, many, many images of Father Leb, images of Samists, and the order of brothers and sisters that were founded by uh, Father Leb in China. But there are also other images in the collection of, well, 
China in general, the Bund in Shanghai, for example, some landscape images, images of, of non-Christian processions, you know, popular religion folk processions in China. There are images of Catholic architecture, both in Chinese style and in the European style, images of Catholic uh, liturgical vestments and liturgical objects such as chalices and patents that were made in the Chinese style which is something that the Samus were clearly interested in. That is a kind of, in the words that some scholars today use to acculturate, enculturate, or indigenize uh, the Catholic Christian uh, uh, presence, Catholic Christian aesthetic, uh, even its theology. These were things that uh, the Samus were quite interested in. So one sees a lot of images of photographs in this collection of those kinds of things, you know, Chinese style churches and the like. But there are also a good number quite a lot of numbers. So this is, uh, let me just begin by showing you a few slides. The top right is an image of, of Father Vincent Leb in his distinctive habit, just to the right shoulder of the Chinese bishop. So this really illustrates this ideal that the, the Samists would be in support of the auxiliaries of the of the Chinese bishop, the Chinese hierarchy. And here you see a Chinese Catholic smoking his pipe and the bottom right image in this, in this, uh, this particular slide is of a woman uh, studying who would become part of, of the female enterprise sponsored by Vincent Leb. And then the other thing I wanted to say too is, is that in this collection, you have, as I mentioned, a great number of Chinese uh, Catholic uh, prints. One of the things that uh, was happening in the 1930s, 1940s, even the 1920s in Beijing, at especially Furen Dashia at Furen University or, or the, the Peking Catholic University, as it's also called, was that local Chinese Catholics were creating Catholic art, Christian art in their own style. So here we see an image of Our Lady with, uh, with, with the Madonna, with the infant Jesus, but painted in an almost, well, not in an almost, a very Chinese style, almost as if, almost as if Mary is a kind of Guanyin looking figure. But the, the Samus collection has a really excellent collection of Chinese style Christian or Chinese style Catholic art. Well, when we arrived, we had to make some, some rather uh, uh, important decisions. So the first thing I wanna say is that the, the, the digitization process, uh, project really began in 2016 when we were discussing it, but in 2017, um, we, we went as a team to Brussels, we met into, in, in the Samist, uh, building with the archive up, up above on the third or fourth floor, I can't recall, but we were there in 2017 to digitize the project. And when we arrived in Brussels, we discovered that there were uh, a, a number of albums. Now, Dr. John Paul Wiest, who was really the, the director of the project and still is the director of the project because it's ongoing. Dr. John Paul Wiest uh, is really one of the world's, if not the world's expert in the Samist uh, history, the Samist enterprise in China. And he had gone through the photo albums. And as you see in this particular slide, he had marked the photographs that he thought were the ones that needed to be specifically the most important ones that needed to be digitized and preserved uh, and, and, and uh, marked with, with metadata. And so what happened then is once we were there as a team, we looked at these images and these photo albums, we also discovered that there were images all over <laughs> the building, not just in the archive and all over the archive in various places. And we discovered, or we decided that we had enough people that we would just at least make a valiant attempt to digitize the entire, the entire collection, all of the Samist images related to the, the Samist enterprise in China, not just the ones that were, were marked. So uh, we had images in albums, we had images in, in boxes, and we had images certainly in uh, 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 loose, loose envelopes sort of out and around. So uh, again, in 2017, when we surveyed the collection, we decided not just to, to photograph and digitize the marked ones, but to try and digitize the entire collection. So we devised a system for proceeding. Uh, first, it was we wanted to think about how to organize them. And this was a distinct challenge, right? Because many photos were in albums. So you can see in the top right here, some of the albums that we had with these 
images of the Samist enterprise in China. It's not just Samist, there were Lazarus, pictures of the Lazarus enterprise, photographs of, of other orders, other religious societies and congregations. They're also included uh, throughout the, this collection, um, even important Roman Catholic events in Shanghai at Xu Jiahui are represented in these, in these albums all collected by Samus. So many photos were in albums, many photographs were in boxes. So you can see to the left here, some of the boxes uh, in the archive, the Samus archive in Brussels. So there were many photographs dispersed throughout the boxes. Some other boxes were in other parts of the archive. Many were also found in loose envelopes uh, on shelves. And we would, we made attempts to look at look through these loose envelopes that maybe were unidentified and located additional photographs of the mission in China. Some of the albums and photographs were actually found in other rooms in the building. So in the bottom right, you see Dr. John Paul Wiest and myself, Anthony Clark, you see us looking through a, a random bookshelf finding, and Dr. Weiss there is looking at images uh, of, of the Samus uh, enterprise in China. So we, we discovered images throughout the building and tried to bring them into the archives so they could also be digitized. So the team then, uh, the team, uh, as, as we worked, we, we divided our, our work into uh, sort of separate areas. The photographs that were marked as the most important, we largely or mostly digitized them using a high quality scanner. So you see here in the top right, we had a scanner and the scanner was used to, to uh, scan the most important uh, images, at least that we thought that were the most important images in the highest resolution. So they're very, very large. And you can see here uh, next to the scanner are some of the loose envelopes that had photographs in them uh, that, that really did later create a problem in how do we how do we organize them into a digital archive when in the physical archive they're sort of scattered around now i shouldn't say that the archive was disorganized i mean it's better organized than many archives but certainly as all or uh, archives typically have there are areas that are unprocessed or areas where things have been stored you can just make additional discoveries so we scanned what we thought to be the most important ones on the left you see dr amanda clark uh, my wife who is setting out a, a photograph that we would you know, sort of straighten them out and flatten them and put them on these, these gray mats with uh, and all of the, the images that we scanned and photographed, we scanned them uh, or photographed them with, with scale uh, rulers beside them so we knew the size of the photograph. But we photographed um, because there were several thousand images and there was no way we could process the entire uh, collection uh, in, in the, the, the few weeks that we were in Brussels. Uh, by scanning them. Scanning took a long time. So we did scan all the most important ones, but we photographed the others at high resolution. So they're quite good, but they were photographed. And uh, you see uh, there is uh, Dr. Amanda Clark uh, preparing a photograph to be to be uh, uh, photographed. Um, Thibault Coleman was doing the scanning. You see Dr. Jean-Paul Wiest in the back, sort of doing some organizational work. And then in the bottom right, you see Dr. Wiest and myself looking at the images that have been digitized and sort of thinking about you know, how is the quality, thinking about how we could organize them, how we could preserve them on uh, external hard drives to, to send back to, or to return with us to the United States. So, this was our fundamental process, but we did have quite a, a good team and the team, oh, let me go back. The team comprised of several people, myself, uh, 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 Anthony Clark, uh, Dr. John Paul Wiest, his wife, Nyleen Jo Wiest, who you see in the, the left photograph, sort of standing in the back in the green shirt. Uh, Dr. Nyleen Jo Wiest was, was there helping with the project. Uh, Dr. Amanda Clark was uh, helping with the project. Thibaut Coleman was also helping uh, with the project, who is in fact a, a citizen of, of Belgium. So he, it was helpful to have him. He you know, spe a native speaker of uh, French and, and Flemish. So, uh, uh, and a university student at Whitworth uh, in, in the United States where I teach. So he was very helpful in scanning and helping with some of the linguistic issues that we would we would encounter. But we also did have many, many visitors. So you see in the bottom right, uh, uh, Professor Thomas Kumans from the University at Leuven, who visited us to, to, to talk about the, the collection. His specialty is architecture. So he uh, is uh, one of the great scholars of ecclesial architecture throughout the world. But but one of his main interests is the ecclesial architecture uh, of China. So he came to visit us. 
We had several others. Uh, we had in, in this image to the left, you see the, the Bishop Alois Justin, who was, who was the, visit, the, the, the bishop there, really the, the ultimate authority over this Samist collection. But he visited Father Paul uh, Bossore, who is, who is seen in the top right image uh, just next to, between uh, Dr. Wiest and myself. Uh, Father Paul is a Samist himself. So he was there to, to look at our project. And then again, you see an image in the bottom right that you see Dr. Um, Dr. Uh, Nyleen Joe Wiest. Uh, and in the background, you see Dr. John Paul Wiest, myself, and Professor Thomas, Dr. Thomas Kumans, who, who visited. But mostly, um, we worked, but but we certainly had time for play. Uh, we did enjoy some really great uh, Belgian food, certainly some good beer. We visited several uh, historical sites around the city, but mostly mostly what we did was was work. And here you see us uh, continuing uh, what was a lot of very long days working on this this project of digitization. Um, and then finally, I should say, we began this project in 2017. So it was, uh, I believe, either in late 2017, maybe early 2018, when the digital, uh, the interface began to appear at University of uh, Whitworth University's Digital Commons, where we have these photographs now digitized and available to scholars. But the big goal of the whole project was to, to make the albums and images that you see on the left available to scholars through an open online digital archive uh, through the Whitworth University uh, uh, Samist China Photograph Collection. And already books are published, journal articles have been published, certainly other web pages have featured photographs from this site. So there has been a great deal of scholarly interest in this, this particular collection. And there continues to be a great deal of scholarly interest in this collection. And we are continuing uh, many, many years later, finalizing the organization and accessibility of these, these, these images to the public as uh, Professor Wiest or Dr. John Paul Wiest has really single-handedly done an, an enormous amount of, of, of spade work on looking at the images and identifying who the people are and where the places are in the images and creating a spreadsheets with a good deal of metadata that is still being used to uh, identify the images. We, we're about halfway finished actually after 2017. I'm, this presentation is being, I'm giving this now in, in 2020, the very end of 2020 in December, and we're still, uh, uh, we're still working on this, just about halfway finished, but uh, we're picking up the pace and I see uh, that we are, are nearing a very, uh, perhaps by the end of the year, nearing the end of this project. So that is a basic uh, history and a basic, um, a basic summary of the project. So thank you so much.